her feet like a clumsy fall, raised her forehead to his, and announced, as clearly as if she had actually spoken the words, You know I'm the one. Now get me out of here. Um, so, yep, yeah, this is a book about a dog um, called Gracie, obviously. And um, it's a really nice story, so uh, I thought that it would be nice to kind of read something nice after my week, and I hope you all enjoy it. If you like dogs, you'll probably enjoy it, but um, even if you don't, I think it's a nice enough tale, so. I'll read the foreword first. So here we go. When an energetic eight-week-old albino Great Dane came into our lives one freezing January day, we didn't realize that our future business advisor and spiritual guide had arrived. She was deaf and partially blind in one eye. She had a delicate constitution but our tenacious and generous spirit would soon reshape our ideas, our careers, and our destinies. She would inspire us to believe in ourselves. People know us best for our entrepreneurial success as the founders of Three Dog Bakery. What they don't know is that we owe it all to a gigantic deaf dog named Gracie. But even though Gracie sowed the seeds of our success, this isn't a book about making it. This is a story of a dog who was born with the cards stacked against her, but whose passionate, joyful nature helped her turn what could have been a dog's life into a victory of the canine spirit, and in the process, save two guys who thought they were saving her. Good girl. 
way she usually did. The reason was obviously Merlin. I could see how cute he was and how much joy he gave her. Yeah, 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 right in the middle of the road, adorable. But by the end of the week, I realized that I wasn't just sharing her joy. I was starting to narrow my eyes and grit my teeth whenever I saw her smiling. It was a subtle change, but she picked up on it. Something bothering you, hon? Uh, me? Never. You sure about that? Yep. Maybe something you can't put into words. Look, I snapped. If something was going on in my subconscious, don't you think I'd know about it? <laughs> well, let me know if anything does bother you, okay? Not likely. I felt the way you do when your best friend falls in love. And suddenly the running buddy who gave you all that no-strings attention is focusing the spotlight on someone else. In this case, someone who generally has his face in a bowl of soggy kibble. Merlin was a walking reminder of everything about Blue that was gone. It seemed like everyone I knew had a dog, and they were all so darn happy about it. I couldn't even get away from it at home. Since Mark got the girls, who might as well have been his shadows the way they stuck to his side. Of course, real shadows don't shed, or beg for treats whenever you're cooking. The girls were great in their way, especially if you have a soft spot for hyperactive, narcissistic, adolescent canine maniacs, which the historical record seems to suggest I do. And even those there and Dottie hung out with me more and more. I could never shake the thought that they weren't blue, that they weren't technically mine, even if we were living under the same leaky roof. At the stroke of noon, my phone rang. Listen, Dan, I hate to bother you. It was Anne.